Saluton, kiel vi fartas? Parolas Tomaso. Hi, I'm Thomas Alexander. I'm one of the organizers of the of ARE, the Autuna Rencontijo de Esperanto, that translates to Fall Esperanto Gathering. Uh, we're just back from another weekend and had a real nice time. Um, one of the things I'd like to talk about is just put together something for uh, people who've never been before, so maybe you know uh, what to expect. Um, so, uh, one of the, so I guess the first question is, what is the Fall Esperanto Gathering? What is Are? Uh, so, it's basically a weekend in the woods. Well, not in the woods, but on a lake. Um, not quite uh, like the ocean I have here in the background here, but uh, I thought that would be better than just the uh, blue sheet that I have hanging up behind me, uh, which occasionally pokes through over here, and I've been trying to ignore in the first couple takes. Uh, and I've decided that I'm just going to enjoy that for what that is. But, uh, so, uh, we get between 30 and 50 people who come out to uh, spend Columbus Day weekend uh, with us on Lake George. It's at uh, Silver Bay YMCA. Um, the information on that is available. Um, I'll try to put all these in the links uh, in the description of the video. Um, so, the one question that comes up is, um, what, when does it start? And there's not a, a simple uh, answer to that question. A lot of people come down Friday night. Um, so if, you, if your travel plans would let you get to uh, Silver Bay uh, Friday evening in time for dinner, there'd be uh, some folks there to meet, up, meet with and have dinner. Um, the first real official start of the program is around three or four in the afternoon, um, and we'll have we'll have that information on the uh, website for next time. Um, make sure that's clear, and that's with the uh, part of the program that we call Bon Venon Caiplia Yaro and Esperanto. So what happens there? Um, if anybody had been uh, traveling anywhere for an Esperanto event, they can get up and speak about it. Some people will bring pictures. Um, every year we've got somebody who will talk about the World Esperanto Congress. Uh, we've got people who um, go to the uh, National Convention of Esperanto, Uso A. So one question is, where is uh, Silver Bay? Uh, it's on Lake George. It's a YMCA um, I suppose you can call it a conference center, retreat center. Um, there are a number of things to do. A lot, um, half the group, roughly. Uh, uh, one portion of the group will stay in the so-called Unolara Dometo, which is a cottage that uh, we rent ahead of time, and then uh, divide out the rooms and beds uh, for people who are interested in staying there. Um, it's not just young people who will stay there, but uh, anybody who does stay there should be uh, forewarned that it's the sort of place where uh, people might be playing cards uh, till the early morning. Getting distracted by my disappearing background. So yeah, if you're staying in the uh, Unolara Dometo, um, you can contact the uh, contact person. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the Unulara Dometo. Um, so, yeah, so that's relatively inexpensive. One of the things that uh, you need to keep in mind for that is you cook your own meals, so uh, do your grocery shopping ahead of time or contact somebody you know who's going and make plans to have groceries to do your own cooking. Uh, the other basic option that we have uh, for staying is uh, most people, so again, a bunch of people will stay in the inn. Um, which is a historic building that's right in the center of their campus. Um, it's actually uh, quite a nice building. Um, try to put some pictures up of it. Sometimes I've, I've been told that the um, the rooming options are a little bit confusing, and I can see why somebody might say that. Uh, the um, but basically it comes down to: Are you going to stay in the Unilara Dometo or are you going to stay in the inn? Um, and then once you've made that decision, then it goes from there. 
Um, if you're staying in the inn, there's a dining hall that has uh, three meals a day provided. Uh, and it's real nice. They have a buffet out there and uh, uh, pretty, pretty good food and some nice company in the dining hall uh, with people to speak Esperanto with. Um, and then it comes down to whether you're going to have a roommate. Um, we can, it's, it's certainly cheaper if you have a roommate, but you can come with that one. Um, so that's that. So then we talked about when you can arrive. Um, usually mid-afternoon on Saturday. Uh, we'll have the exact time up on our uh, website with the information there. Um, so what else, what else do you do while you're at an Esperanto uh, event? Um, well, certainly, like a lot of other Esperanto events, we have um, different um, programs planned out. Um, basically, the programs are made up by the people who, I should say the programs, it's a little weird for me, actually, honestly, uh, speaking about some of this in English. Um, in fact, I should probably come to that point first. So, one thing you should uh, expect at Are is to speak Esperanto. Um, we have people come that have only been learning for a few months. Um, we have people that have been speaking for 50 years, uh, but uh, we do speak Esperanto nearly all the time. Um, hopefully that won't intimidate anybody. Uh, if, if, you do, if there's something you don't understand in terms of you know, what's happening next in the program, uh, there's certainly uh, somebody who can explain that um, in English. One nice thing uh, about Ari is that it really is an international um, event. We have people... Um, Easily, roughly uh, a third of our people are uh, the people who participate. That is, uh, are from uh, Canada. Uh, a good a good chunk of them are from Montreal, and my son is home. Hi. So, uh, yeah, we've got the Eiffel Tower in the background. Um, I is a, an international event, like I said, with people from Canada, um, including Quebec and uh, America, and uh, it seems like every year we have one or two international, I said it's overseas uh, guests who come for the conference. So it's, re it's really a chance to use Esperanto for what it's really meant for. All right, so we have arrived at Are, and we have our uh, summary of what's happened since uh, we were together last year in terms of uh, what Esperanto events we've gone to. Um, there are a number of other lectures, whatever you want to call them, uh, programmero, we, we typically call them, um, elements of the program, and, but they're not, they're not just, um, somebody talking, like I am right here, uh, we, um, so you're not just sitting and, uh, you know, listening to somebody talk, sometimes, uh, sometimes there's discussions, there's a dance, there's like dance instruction, um, in the morning to get up and get yourself moving, um, We've got, what else do we have? Uh, I mean, of course, it all depends on who's there to present, but uh, it's it's nice we have a mix of different kinds of things. Um, I should have made notes. Uh, sometimes you can come to the Esperanto convention and listen to me talk. And I talk about it like this. But the uh, nice thing is people are there to ask questions. You can have conversations about the topics that you bring up. Um, and sometimes if somebody's read a book, They'll give a five-minute report or a long presentation on it, depending. Um, and you can sort of pick and choose what you're interested in, what you want to see. Um, another nice thing about the weekend is there are uh, activities at the venue that are available to us as uh, people staying there. Um, kayaking, uh, rowboating, uh, archery, shuffleboard. Uh, so if you were interested in sort of an active type gaming, uh, ways of passing the weekend. Uh, we have all ages, and so um, this past weekend we had real nice weather. I saw people out playing frisbee, uh, people from the Esperanto group that is, and uh, then I could tell by some of the pictures that were up that uh, the uh, young people in the uh, Unilada Dormetto were playing cards into the night. Um, so it's an always a nice mix of things. Um, the weekend wraps up uh, Monday morning. It's a holiday in the United States and also in Canada. It's Columbus Day and Canadian Thanksgiving. So we'll get up, we'll have one or, one or two more final uh, presentations that people have put together. Um, and then uh, sort of a closing discussion. 
and then everyone's on their way after lunch. Um, all right, so I did not talk about the two evenings. Uh, like I said, well, three evenings if you count Friday night. Friday night, like I said, is the early arrival. Uh, you can arrive early if you'd like. Um, a lot of people don't. Some people do. Uh, might be an opportunity to, uh, I know the time of the years that I've done that, it's been an opportunity to sort of focus on getting to know just the, the, one, the few people that are there early. Um, a lot of times when you get more people, you, uh, you, you get through the weekend, you're like, gosh, I never got to talk to that person over there. Um, yeah, so uh, anyway, so that's one nice thing about coming early. Uh, and it's, it might be a good idea to sort of um, scope out ahead of time, figure out who's coming out early, uh, so you might know who to look for, that sort of thing. Because uh, there are no official at this point, um, and, and if there are any changes, we'll put it on the, uh, the website we have. Uh, but there are typically, traditionally, no um, formal events going on Friday night, but there's, there, that's, there's fireplaces that with fires going in them, and then people might sit by the fire and have a, have a conversation. Um, anything, really, but there's always somebody there f early for the conference on a Friday night. Saturday night, uh, we have the Amiketsa Vespero. Um, I was thinking Intercona Vespero with it, um, which is a traditional element of a lot of Esperanto gatherings, and it's really kind of the same thing. Um, but uh, the Amica Vespero, Vespero um, that would be when we do icebreakers, um, different kinds of games that you might imagine, you know, who can think of seven words that start with the letter R, uh, that sort of thing, but, uh, only a whole lot more cool, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, Saturday night, Sunday night is the Cultura Vespero, which translates to the cultural evening, or the evening of culture, um, I often call it uh, Esperanto Open Mic Night. Uh, so if you have a poem or a musical talent, um, and it could be something in Esperanto, uh, preferably in Esperanto, um, but not necessarily. I know um, we always have somebody get up and play an instrument or um, that sort of thing. It's um, my job to be the MC of the Cultura Vespero, but of course it depends on who's coming and what they have to bring. Um, how the evening's going to go. Uh, we'll have um, poetry, and that's actually another thing that happens during the weekend, I can mention. Um, oftentimes there'll be like a, an hour where people will get together and, all right, here, here's a certain kind of poetry, let's talk about that, and let's work together to see how we can work, some, work up some poems in, in Esperanto. And uh, some people are shy, some people are not shy, and those who are not shy will get up during the Cultura Vespero on Sunday night and uh, read their poem. Um, we, we have people come up, uh, have, they bring a tape along and they'll sing a song with the tape on the accompaniment on the tape. Um, I know my, my, my kids will come and they'll either play their instrument or help me do, help me do some uh, skits, that sort of thing. So there you have it, the uh, off-the-cuff uh, explanation of what to expect at Are, the Fall Esperanto Gathering.